Well, I'm glad you're considering minds. I think it's a great thing to consider. And I'm glad you're considering mathematics and, and or statistics. Uh, I, I think it's a great thing to study. So let me tell you a little bit about myself and then I have a short PowerPoint that I can show you and then we'll just do questions uh, until all the questions are answered. So uh, like I said, I've been here for eight years. I really like it. I went to the University of Utah as an undergraduate. I'm from Salt Lake City. I majored in math and physics there, uh, double major, and uh, it was a fantastic place to be and a great thing to study. I really enjoyed it. Uh, from Salt Lake, I went to um, Duke University for graduate school in North Carolina. So I went out to the East Coast and really loved living in North Carolina, really loved Duke University. And I did a PhD in applied math there. My PhD research was in uh, electromagnetic scattering. So I was doing surface integrals on photonic crystals. And in a scattering problem, you shine light at an object and you wanna know what frequencies are transmitted and what frequencies are reflected and uh, in what intensities. So that turns into a really interesting math problem that uh, can't be done pen and paper. I had to use, uh, I had to build a number of computer algorithms to uh, approximate solutions to that problem. And I was able to approximate solutions in ways that hadn't been done before. So they gave me a PhD. Uh, from there, I taught at Tulane University in New Orleans for four years and living in the South was great. I love New Orleans, it was fun. And, uh, and when I saw an opening back in the mountains, I uh, applied for the job here at Mines and uh, happily got the job. So, um, so there it is. And uh, like I said, I've taught calculus, differential equations, linear algebra. Uh, I've taught our scientific computing class. I've taught some topics classes, mathematics of climate class, our senior capstone class. Uh, anything I get my hands on, I enjoy teaching. So, um, so yeah. Uh, so that's a little bit about me. I, I love living here in Golden, Colorado. It's beautiful. There's lots to do outside, which I like. I like hiking and camping. Uh, I like playing sports. I'm not good at any of them. Uh, I like playing video games. I'm not good at any of those either. Uh, but, uh, but I do enjoy those things. Uh, I like to read novels. I don't like reading nonfiction for some reason, but I love reading fiction. And, uh, and I have five kids. So I spend a lot of time with, uh, there's four of them. I need to update this picture, but uh, spend a lot of time with them, especially lately since they're li uh, living at home, I'm living at home and it's all remote learning. So I'm teaching Calc 1 remotely this semester and they're at home in elementary and middle school. So uh, it's just a big, uh, big Zoom party every day at home. Um, so yeah, let, let me uh, let me open this PowerPoint. Try to share my screen with you on this. I don't do a lot of uh, Zoom power PowerPoint or PowerPoint, so hopefully I can get this this going for you. Um, so let me just. Let me ask again if uh, if you're able to see. Um, can you see the PowerPoint presentation that I'm attempting to share with you? Okay, I'm getting raised hands. That's good. Thank you. All right. Um, wonder, do I need to go full screen on it, or are we okay with this? It's okay. All right. Um, so. Here's a group photo. I don't think I got in this one actually, but uh, but this is a look at our group. And uh, come on, there we go. So what does AMS do? This is the Department of Applied Mathematics and Statistics. The word applied is important to us. A lot of uh, mathematicians are what we call pure mathematicians and they are interested in interesting things, but they're interested in it just for the math sake. They don't necessarily care if it's useful or applicable in any way. We do, we want to apply our mathematics and our statistics to various other things. And that could be um, any of the sciences, physics, chemistry, biology, could be finance or any of the engineering fields. So we have collaborations across campus. 
with the business department or economics department, sorry, with uh, chemistry, biology, hydrology, mechanical engineering, aerospace engineering, electrical engineering, computer science, and so on. So we wanna find ways to make math and statistics useful to these other fields and applicable to these fields. And uh, that involves what we call modeling. So a mathematical model is an equation that describes something. Uh, you've all heard of various, you've all heard of Newton's second law, force equals mass times acceleration. That's a mathematical model. It's a model that is attempting to describe the relationship between an applied force and the motion of an object. What does an applied force do to the motion of an object? F equals MA is the model. And it's such a good model and it's so good at predicting behavior that we call it a law, Newton's second law. But we wanna come up with models. So it could be a model for uh, blood flow through capillaries, or it could be a model as you see in the picture here of a fighter jet, right? Um, and uh, we have these models and then we wanna use the models. The models are a set of equations. We wanna to try to solve the equations to predict behaviors. And if we can do that fighter jet, if we can do it accurately and predict behaviors, maybe um, electromagnetic properties for stealth technology, or maybe just aerodynamic properties for just the aerodynamics of it. Uh, if we can do that accurately, then it's great, right? We, we have a model that we can run on a desktop uh, and we don't have to build the wind jet and build the fighter jet and put the fighter jet in the wind tunnel, right? Uh, so there's a lot of predictive power and power in general in being able to model things successfully. So uh, we're all about building these models and then trying to find solutions to them. That's what we do mathematically. Um, our curriculum uh, in the department can be broken into really four categories, the four that you see here. The problem solving would be the traditional pen and paper math problems. And that could be a proof or it could be compute uh, this integral for some reason or, or, or whatever it is. But it, it uh, was the traditional pen and paper math. And uh, you know, it develops traditional problem solving, creative thinking skills. All of our students, whether they're in mathematics or statistics, will take statistics courses and become familiar with data. Data is a big deal. The whole world's a big pile of data right now. And you have to be able to interpret it and sift through it and find patterns within it. And so we all take statistics courses. Uh, <clears throat> we all take modeling courses, statistical modeling or mathematical modeling, where we can learn how to come up with these equations that describe different behaviors. And then we all take computing classes. Every student, whether math or statistics, is going to take uh, a couple of computer science courses and a couple of courses within AMS within our department where we're using those programming skills to write algorithms to solve um, math and statistics problems or apply those problems to different engineering and science fields. So that combination, the problem solving data, computer programming, modeling, that makes this degree a really strong degree and it makes it a really marketable degree. Uh, the data, the computing in particular, the fact that all of our majors come out of here with statistics knowledge and computer programming experience makes them very marketable. Uh, I'll talk more about where they end up in terms of jobs and stuff uh, in a few slides, but it does make the program strong. I think it makes it enjoyable, diverse in the types of classes you'll take, but also marketable. So um, those, are, those are all good things. Uh, you know, if you have questions, I have this question box open. If you want to ask questions that relate to a slide, something I'm already talking about, ask those questions and I'll answer them as we go. Otherwise, you will have a chance for question and answer at the end here. Uh, there are two tracks within AMS. I've already alluded to the mathematics and the statistics, statistics. So we can graduate in computational applied math or in statistics. And nobody has to make that decision until kind of the end of the second year, beginning of the third year that's where the tracks really start to diverge. So, um, so we do have those two options for undergraduate degree programs. Uh, what content would an applied math major miss out on at Mines versus a pure math major somewhere else? Uh, so our pure math courses are fairly limited. We have a real analysis course and we have an abstract algebra course. And that's, oh, I guess we have an introduction to proofs, which you could consider a pure math course as well. That's really about it for, for pure math. There's other pen and paper math courses like partial differential equations uh, or complex variables, complex analysis. But 
but it's fairly limited. Uh, where I was as an undergraduate at the University of Utah and at any big state school, you're also going to have you know, number theory, topology, algebraic topology, um, all of those types of, of courses, maybe cryptography, all these pure math courses. And I recommend to people who are really know that they're really interested in pure math, I recommend that they go to a place where there are more pure math offerings. Um, because we are really an applied department, we're focusing on the applications and the applied classes. So if you know you want a pure math um, education, that would, that would be something that I would recommend is to look at other places. And I, I would even recommend whatever your large state school is for that. Um, <clears throat> that said, you know, the pure math that we're off, that we do offer, the analysis, the abstract algebra is, is great. You know, it gives you a flavor for what that is. If you know you're interested in applications, but still want to see what those things are like, those things are important in applied mathematics as well. So we do uh, require those classes of our students. And, uh, and they do sufficiently prepare students for graduate school, right? Sometimes we have students who get here thinking they'd be interested in applied mathematics, and then they realize they really do want to do pure math and they go to graduate programs in pure mathematics and they're just fine. They have a sufficient background here to be able to do that. Uh, some of our students who discover that love for pure mathematics while they're here will do like a semester abroad at the Hungary Institute for, for uh, pure mathematics where they take pure math courses there or um, we'll do an independent study to learn some more pure mathematics or something like that. Uh, we do have a Putnam team, which is fairly pure. Uh, in mathematics and they get together uh, a couple times a month to practice Putnam exam questions. And so they, they learn that pure mathematics there. So I hope that helps, uh, Tanner. Uh, anonymous attendee, how different is applied mathematics statistics uh, from something like a data science program? So um, I know Minds does not offer data science. So let me, let me talk about data science at Minds since data science is a big deal. It's extremely marketable, it's extremely interesting um, and powerful. Uh, Minds has a data science track within the computer science department. So for people interested in data science, I recommend one of two pathways. I would say you should major in statistics and minor in data science in computer science, or major in computer science on the data science track with a minor in statistics. I think either one of those things would set you up for a career in data science and you'd be just fine. Um, we also have, let me highlight on the slide here, I was talking about our two undergraduate degrees, math and statistics, but there's also a combined programs. And in an extra year, so five years total, students can come away with a master's degree either in applied math, statistics, or in data science. There is a data science master's degree program. So you could major in statistics, stick around an extra year and have a master's degree in data science, which would set you up for, I'd set you up really well in the job market for data science jobs. So, um, so that is an option here. The data science, just as an undergraduate, like I said, major in stats, minor in data science, or major in CS with data science, minor in stats, those would also set you up very well for data science uh, jobs that you'd be interested in applying for. So data science is here. Um, it, it's uh, housed in the computer science department. Data science typically is thought of as a mix between computer science, statistics, and economics or business. And uh, you can take all of those things here. You can mix and match those things here, majoring in any one of those options. Um, there is a new business, quantitative business program starting here as well, which will also focus on data science from a business perspective. So, you know, you could get a little bit into data science, take an intro class, and then you could decide, do I want to focus more on the computer science aspects, on the statistics aspects, or the business aspects, and get uh, a good education covering a lot of data science along the way. So, um, so I think you'd be fine for data science. Uh, this is a good question from Hunter. How can I combine applied statistics with environmental engineering? So something that is true at Minds that I recommend to students is that they don't double major. Even though I was a double major in math and physics, it's just hard to do here because the uh, undergraduate programs here have to carry a lot of credit hours. 
Now it is possible, and I've known in my eight years here, I've known three or four math CS double majors, I've known a couple of math physics double majors, and I've known a couple of math mechanical engineering ma double majors. So you can do it. And if you know you want to do it coming in, that makes it easier. And if you're coming in with some college credit in the form of AP tests or IB tests or transfer credit, that makes it easier as well. Uh, so it's doable. And you could try a double major with statistics and environmental engineering. Or what is easier and what I would recommend more is to pick one that you enjoy, major in it, and minor in the other. Do a minor in the other, and that would still get you a lot of exposure and a lot of experience in the minor field. Um, and it would not be as stressful or time consuming as doing the double major. Another option, finally, there is you know, maybe you major in environmental engineering, minor in statistics, and then stick around for a fifth year and get a master's degree in statistics. That would be a really interesting combination. You have this environmental engineering background with this master's degree in statistics, that would be marketable, it'd be um, interesting, you know, or the other way around, you know, you major in stats to a master's degree in environmental engineering. Uh, those types of things are possible. And they really don't take many more credit hours than doing a double major. So people who come in thinking, I wanna do a double major, I often say, why don't you pick one and do a master's degree instead in the same amount of credit hours and basically the same amount of time, you'll come out with a master's degree, which starts, which, which gives you a higher starting salary, just makes you, more knowledgeable and marketable at the same time. So those are different ways of combining things. Now, Hunter asked specifically about stats with environmental, but that would be the approach for combining anything you're interested in. You're really interested in math and physics, minor in one of them, or do one and then do a master's degree in the other. Uh, we have a lot of students who do this. So I hope that helps and answers your question, Hunter. Um, on this slide, the last thing that I would just mention is that um, we are smaller than many departments on campus with 140 undergraduates, uh, you get, you know, 30 to 40 per year. And that means you're going to, in, in a smaller department like that, you kind of grow up with the same cohort. You're a sophomore, a junior, senior, you're all taking the same classes with the same 30 students. You get to know people pretty well. You get to know faculty pretty well, there's students pretty well, you form your study groups and your friendships out of the department pretty well. And I think that's a plus. I think that's an advantage of being one of the smaller departments. I don't remember, there are a few departments smaller than math. The largest department on campus is mechanical engineering. Uh, that's got over a thousand students in mechanical engineering. So, so that gives you some sense of the scale between the biggest department, mechanical, and one of the smaller ones, math, with 140 students. Uh, I think our faculty are fantastic. We regularly win the campus-wide teaching awards. Students seem to, to love the faculty and I love working with these people that I get to work with. So, um, You see a picture here of some tutoring going on. We hire a lot of our students as campus-wide tutors uh, or graders. There are definitely work opportunities within the department. And I think those are good opportunities because when you're tutoring or, or grading, you review things, right? Uh, you tutor Calc 2, then you really have to review that material and know it well. And that's good for our majors. So we like that they do that. And I think it's enjoyable for them. So um, moving on to the next slide. Oh, I've stalled out. There we go. Um, I mentioned the Putnam team. I don't know if you're familiar with Putnam, but it's a famously hard math test that's taken every December. It's on hold this year because of the pandemic, but uh, it'll be back up, I think, next year. It's famously hard. You can, you can get a sense of how hard it is when I say the median score is a zero. So uh, zero out of 200 on this test. But uh, we often, we have a, a team that practices and they have a coach, Professor Swanson is the Putnam coach. And she coaches them into Putnam problems, which are pure math problems and proofs. And uh, they do pretty well. We've had a few uh, score up in the 50s and 60s, which is outstanding. And most of our students score above zero, which again, zero is the median score. So uh, more than that, you know, they have pizza as they practice together. And they just, you know, for people who are really interested in that type of stuff, um, it's a fun environment for them. Okay. Um, 
the Society for Women in Mathematics is just such a great club. They meet a couple times a month and they meet with alumni. They meet with current students. They have information panels, graduate student panels, panels from people who are um, panels from people who have done internships or summer research positions. How did they get them? What was their experience like? Uh, they do professional development workshops, like a resume workshop, salary negotiation workshop. They do some fun events like uh, trivia night and things like that as well. I think it's one of the best clubs on campus. The math club is also great. The math club uh, is student led and they do what they want to do, they, which often involves getting speakers and eating pizza and listening to somebody give a math talk. Although they do some you know, social events as well and other things. We have a lot of students that get summer jobs, summer internships, a lot of students that do undergraduate research on campus. Within our own department, Professors Pankovic, Professor Cecilia Dini Spain, and Professor Liederman, all Professor Nitschka and Hammerling, they're all working with undergraduate students right now on various projects. So that is a possibility for undergraduates here to get involved with some interesting research. Um, Professor Nitschka and Hammerling are both data scientists. And so they do undergraduate data science research with students and it's uh, climate research. They're both uh, data scientists who do climate research. So that's some undergraduate research going on there. We have some math biology research going on. In the picture here, um, this student did an undergraduate summer research program at Sandia National Laboratories in New Mexico, uh, close to whoever is from Taos. Uh, somebody from, was from Taos on this list, I remember. Um, so we have all those things going on. Um, I mentioned some of the, the ways in which we employ our students as well. So I said AMS is marketable, um, and it's because of the, the, the types of classes we take. Everybody takes some stats classes, is familiar with data, everybody has computer programming skills, problem solving skills, modeling skills. This makes for a good job candidate. And you get, you get to go to career fair and say, hey, look, I know uh, you advertise for a mechanical engineer to do this and this and this, but I can do all of those things and I'm a math major, I do them really well. And they say, okay, you're hired. So that's how it works. We don't have necessarily a one-to-one -one pipeline with any particular industry, like uh, an electrical engineer would, for example. Math is fairly general and statistics is generally useful as well. And so if you look at this list of companies that have hired our students in recent years, you see that it's pretty diverse. We have government, government laboratories, the energy industries, aerospace, um, Major League Baseball <laughs> for data analytics, um, you know, insurance, actuarial work, Comcast, entertainment, uh, Fast Enterprises does data, software development, think tanks, consulting firms. These are types of jobs that our students get. Is really general and really broadly applicable. And that's great uh, because, you know, it, it, you know, it's good to be generally useful. Um, what that means is that our students kind of have to figure out what they want to do and they have to target certain places. I just, uh, I just had a, I just wrote a letter of recommendation for a student uh, who applied for a job at the Mayo Clinic in Minnesota in medicine uh, as a data scientist and got the position. So he's in Minnesota now. And, he was in my class this past spring, which was very cool. So it's it's very marketable uh, in a lot of different ways. If you want to be a hands-on engineer, you should major in engineering. But uh, you know, if you want to work at a computer and solve interesting engineering problems and uh, write algorithms to solve aerodynamics problems, then you can work at Lockheed Martin doing that as a math as a mathematician or as a statistician. So uh, so those jobs are there. And you can see the variety of them. And uh, of course, these, well, I think the next slide talks about job placement rates. We have very high job placement rates. This is comparable to every other department on campus. And if you're coming to Mines but aren't sure what you want to major in, um, then I would, I would say, you know, you can think about what you're passionate about because all of the departments on campus have very high job placement rates and very high starting salaries. So that's, that's the good news, right? You're not gonna make a bad decision. If you come here, all of the decisions are good decisions. So, um, so these are great numbers that we're proud of, um, basically comparable to every department on campus except petroleum, which has higher starting salaries, uh, just by the nature of being petroleum. So, um, 
Tanner asked about internship opportunities. So there is undergraduate research on campus that you can get paid for. And that's kind of like an internship, but there's a program for that and you apply into it. And if you're selected, then you do uh, research with a professor on campus. And then what, what a lot of our students do is apply for internships, uh, for summer internships. And uh, there are a few ways to do that. So let, let me outline some of the ways that people get these internships. We have a career day every fall and every spring, and it's huge. Tons of companies come and you go and you talk to them and you apply for internships or full-time work after graduation. And you get to meet recruiters, you get to give them a resume, you get to say, I'm really good at this. I think I'd be a good fit for this internship you have. And a lot of our students get internships that way. We have uh, what we call DiggerNet, where, where companies advertise internships and full-time uh, positions. And uh, our students go to DiggerNet and they say internships and they search and a, a bit long list comes up and they can choose which ones to apply to. Then also our students will just say, hey, I didn't see anything on DiggerNet. This company wasn't a career day, but I've always wanted to work for Northrop Grumman in Fort Collins. And they just go to the website and there are internships listed there. I've always wanted to work at a national laboratory in Los Alamos or at uh, the Lawrence Livermore Laboratory in Berkeley, California. You just go to that website and you look at the internships that are available and you apply. So our students get, have gotten jobs doing that as well. And then finally, uh, another thing that is fairly common for math math students is to do what we call an REU, which stands for uh, Research Experience for Undergraduates. Uh, REU Math, if you Google it, um, you will see a bunch of these research experience for undergraduates. And what this is, is universities across the country receive funding to do this and they set up uh, summer research programs with faculty members. So you'll go on and you'll see, oh, the University of Tennessee in Knoxville has a math biology REU this summer with somebody studying epidemiology. And so you apply for it, you get it, you go to Knoxville for 10 weeks in the summer, they pay you to do this and you work with a faculty member on this research for 10 weeks. They put you up in the dorms on campus and uh, it's fun. I did two of these as an undergraduate myself a long time ago and it was really fun. So that's another thing that a lot of our students want to do uh, especially students interested in going on to research or going to graduate school, they'd like to do these uh, REU research experience for undergraduates. They're competitive, they're not easy to get, but we do place students into these programs every year. So, um, so I hope that helps, Tanner, uh, some talk about the internships. Uh, there's the, the, the research type internships, which are more academic, and then the working on your career internships, which is working for different companies uh, for, for a summer. Uh, I am Mike Nicholas, the second email address here. Actually, uh, Scratch, I should have edited this out. There we go, because Jamie's no longer with us. But I am here, and I'm happy to answer questions about this department, about uh, what it's like, student life, courses, uh, different tracks, career opportunities, anything along those lines. Um, credit, AP credit, IB credit, anything that you'd like to know, I'm happy to answer questions. Don't hesitate to, to email me. So that was uh, the, the presentation. I am happy to entertain questions for as long as people have questions at this point. Uh, what is it you'd like to know about mines in general or AMS in particular? And I do appreciate the questions that have come in along the way. Those were good questions. Oh, another one, I don't, oh, Jamie just asked, how is the workload? Um, you know, it's uh, comparable, I think, to the workload of, of most of the degrees on campus. Um, my students tend to think that their workload is heavier than at other universities. And having been and taught at other universities, I don't think that's necessarily the case. I just think that when you're in the middle of a, of a busy semester and you have a lot of work to do and a lot of learning going on, it feels like a heavy workload. I remember as an undergraduate, I remember feeling like I was treading water and I would get a big assignment done 
And instead of being able to celebrate or relax, I'd get it done and I'd be like, wow, there's another one. <laughs> it's right around the corner. And a lot of you have experienced this in high school as well. But um, I think that the, the workload is going to keep people busy. But I do think it is one desirable or essential, important, but also possible to maintain a social life, to maintain hobbies, to maintain things that you're interested in and still come to minds and do the work here and graduate with a really strong education. So uh, I think our students have fun. The AMS students that I know and talk to, they're able to have fun. There are times when they feel stressed. Uh, and I think that would happen at any university, but they're able to, to enjoy being here and being together and being with other ore diggers. Um, and I think, you know, I think it'll be tough at times and uh, rewarding overall. So that's how I would describe the workload. Um, let me let me take these one at a time in the order that I saw them. Um, oh, awesome. Okay. From Natalie, what programs do you think we will use most often for modeling? Uh, do you, I, I assume you mean software or computer programs. Um, so we will require students to learn Python, C++, and MATLAB. And then I think, um, oh, and R for statistics. The STAT students will do most of their work in R. And the applied math students will do the bulk of their work in MATLAB. Um, but they will also know how to program in C++ and Python. And if they prefer those things, those will be options in a lot of classes. So uh, those are the programming languages where a lot of the, the programming will take place. Um, I think, hope that was what you were asking, Natalie. Um, Elias, which classes can I expect to take in my freshman year? So the first math class at Minds is Calc 1. And, uh, you know, it depends on whether you have um, already done some calculus in, in like uh, AP calculus or at a community college or something like that. We have a lot of students who start in Calc 1, and that's just fine. You can start in Calc 1. That's the starting point. Uh, we have a lot of students who start in Calc 2 or Calc 3 because of AP credits, sometimes because of other transfer credits like community college credits, students will start with linear algebra differential equations credit as well. The more credit you bring in, the better. It just makes your career here more flexible to add a minor or to add a study abroad or just to graduate earlier or do the master's degree program or just save money or save, save the stress of having an 18 credit hour semester in your junior year. So. Uh, if you're getting that credit, go ahead and earn it. If you're taking AP calculus, take the test and pass it. Uh, it's a good thing to do. So, um, so yeah, the, the track is typically Calc 1, 2, 3, the differential equations, uh, intro to statistics. And then we, we get into more advanced courses, linear algebra, intro to proof, scientific computing, um, those types of courses. Um, I can answer more specific questions if you have them, Elias, just, just ask. Uh, Jamie... Uh, can I apply dual credit calculus to the Mines Math Department? Maybe. <laughs> it just depends on where you got that dual credit. Um, we have agreements in the state of Colorado to accept those types of things. But to be certain, you could email me the details and I could look into your case and I could respond to let you know. Um, Michael, do many AMS students go down the actuarial path? I would not say many do, but we probably have one or two per year. Uh, we don't have an actuarial science degree program, but just majoring st in statistics, um, we, our, our students who are interest, interested in actuarial science, they can pass the first and the second actuarial exam while they're undergraduate students in minds based on the courses they take here. And we have a lot of students who do that. Um, or of the students who go into actuarial science, most of them are able to pass the courses, pass the actuarial exam, the first few exams while they're undergraduate students here. So it's definitely something that's possible here. Um, we have the coursework for it and we have students who go into actuarial science every year. We have a um, connection, connection with Cigna right now. Uh, they come and they advertise every year on campus uh, because one of their actuaries is a recent graduate from our department. Uh, Jamie, is there a course for something that would work 
hands-on with computers, computer science, and applied math. I don't know exactly what you're getting at there, but a lot of our courses are involving computer programming and applied math, right? We just have a lot of courses like that. And we have a lot of students who do a major in math and a minor in computer science because they love the programming aspect. They want to learn more about the, the computer science parts of things. So yes, I guess a lot of our classes are programming in order to solve math problems. Uh, anonymous, is it important to have a strong computer background before coming into the department? I would say no. Uh, we start you out at an introduction in Calc 1, so it's not strong. You don't have to have a strong calculus background or any calculus background. You do need strong algebraic skills. Uh, and then uh, computing, you would start in CS Computer Science 101, where they uh, teach an introduction to programming. So there's no programming experience necessary coming in. You can start in an introductory level class. If you have that experience, it'll be to your advantage, but it's not necessary. Uh, when do you have to choose your major by? Usually we ask students to pick a major at the end of their first year. You don't have to know ahead of time. When you come into Minds after being accepted, they might ask you what majors are you interested in. You're not bound to that list at all. The first year courses are basically <coughs> common for all students. <coughs> So everybody's going to take the same classes and then you kind of decide. You get some exposure and chances to talk to faculty and other students while you're here in that first year to help you make that decision. So um, yeah, it's not a lot of pressure to decide. Uh, and a fair number of students, not just at Mines, but everywhere in the United States, change their major at some point. You know, you come in and think you're going to do this, you actually find out you like that. You change your major at some point. So. Uh, do I teach any freshman course? I'm teaching Calc 1 right now, which I love. I love teaching first year students because they're so excited to be in college. Um, so yeah, I teach Calc 1, Calc 2, Calc 3, and first years take all of those. I teach differential equations, which some first years take. So yes, I also te teach our uh, CSM 101, which is a one credit hour, once a week freshman success seminar, where we talk about things like mental health, study skills, um, how do you get to know faculty? We just advice on college. So I teach that as well. Uh, I've already completed Calc 2 and 3 with math class. What I need to take freshman year, I'd recommend differential equations. I would take differential equations in your as your first class. Um, after that, linear algebra. Natalie, odd question, but here goes. MacBook computer, it's not friendly for writing code downloading files for something like our studio. What computer would you recommend us have for coding, if any? Um, I think you should be able to get by with any computer. If the MacBook is just old and slow and you want to upgrade it to something, um, do that. But um, people here will help you make it work, right? There are a lot of people with PCs, a lot of people with Macs, and a handful of people running Linux. And the computer science instructor uh, or the math instructor is going to help you make it work. So you're going to be OK with any operating system. Uh, that's not going to be a big deal. Um, if you have tried our studio on a Mac, I've done our studio on a Mac, and it's worked out OK for me. Um, but you just haven't liked it, and you want to do something else, then you can switch to a PC. That's fine. But you definitely don't need to do that. You will be OK with your MacBook. Um, Charles, you're a junior in high school. Um, that wasn't a question, but congratulations. Should we have a computer and or laptop? Oh, if so, PC, Mac, or Linux. Take your preference again, like I just said. Uh, I think, yes, you should have a computer. It's not required, but you should have it. You're going to be happy that you have a computer. And uh, pick the operating system you like. It's not going to matter. Um, with the software that's required on campus. If by chance there's some software for some class that uh, is not available on a Mac, then you might have to go into a computer lab and work on a PC for that one particular class. But I'm not aware of any software like that, especially not in our department. Is there a linear algebra course? Yes, linear algebra is fundamental to mathematics. There are no math departments in this world that don't, don't have a linear algebra course. Um, it's, it's an important course. Um, 
for pure and applied mathematics, actually. So it's kind of a big deal. And yes, we have it. And we would recommend you take it after differential equations um, pretty early on. Do AMS students study physics at all? Uh, yeah, I mean, all of our students will take physics one and physics two. That is required. Um, <clears throat> and then calc one, two, three have a lot of physics applications, uh, position, velocity, acceleration, right? Or electromagnetics, or things like that. And then um, <clears throat> anything beyond that, I would say you could choose to take more physics. We have a lot of people who minor in physics with a major in math or statistics, and that's definitely doable. So if you want more physics, it's there for you. Uh, and the physics department is great. It's a fantastic department. Um, is this a good major to go on to to get a master's in engineering afterwards? I would say that you definitely can major in math and statistics and go on and get a master's in engineering. That's definitely a possibility. It depends on what kind of an engineer you want to be, right? If you want to be the engineer who's building engines um, for a Formula One race team, why would you major in mathematics for that? I would major in mechanical engineering and then get a master's in mechanical engineering. But if you want to be the engineer who's crunching numbers and looking at data and running simulations for your engineering firm, math or statistics is a really great way to go. It's a really strong way to get into that. And you'd have, in some ways, an advantage over other, other, over other engineers in similar fields. From Tristan, do first year students tend to have trouble with their first computer science classes? <clears throat> you know, I would say every class I've ever taught, there, there are some students who have trouble, right? Out of those students, most of them have a hard time because of maybe the adjustment to college or maybe, maybe they're just uh, in a rough spot and they're not showing up to class or they're not doing the work, or maybe they've burned out, or maybe they've, I don't know, maybe they, they are in trouble in some way. Uh, mental health issues, things like that. I think that's obviously not unique to minds. That's something that would be true on any campus. But the students in my classes who come to class and do the work and ask for help when they need it, always do fine. Never had a student come to class, do the work, and ask for help when needed, and fail the class. And that student almost always gets an A in the class. So um, that really is the secret, whether you're at Mines or anywhere else, no matter where you go, the secret is to show up, do the work. And if you do that, you're gonna learn a lot, and you're gonna pass your classes, and you're gonna have a college degree. Um, ask for help when you need it. So I don't teach computer science classes, so I don't know specifically like what the the, the fail rate is for our computer science classes, but it is a genuine introduction for students who've never had any programming experience before. They're trying to ease you into things and show you how it works. They, they want, you know, computer science is a good department. They want to be a successful department. They want, um, they want students to learn how to program. So they're, they're going to do the best they can in that. And they they will offer all the support in the world. If you're, you know, if you are willing to go into office hours and ask questions or get help from a TA or a tutor, which there's free tutoring on campus for these courses, then you're going to be okay. Uh, what do first year students have the most trouble with? That is, you know, it's such a, a variety of things. Some people have a difficult time with the academic transition. Some people had a relatively easy time in high school and all of a sudden they're working 50 hours a week in college, 60 hours a week during a busy week, and they're, it's tough, right? It's a tough transition. Other, other students have a really rigorous academic experience in high school, and the transition is not so hard. You know, I know a lot of students who come in, they're like, this is actually a little bit easier than my junior year in high school when I had five AP courses. So uh, it kind of depends there, um, the academic transition. I'd say the social transition is really smooth for a lot of students, but some students struggle with the social transition as well. Uh, but, you know, you're coming and living in a dorm and that gives a kind of a built in network to make friends. You have your your classes and that's another opportunity to make friends. You have the clubs on campus, which is another opportunity to make friends. Friends are important. 
Um, and that social transition is important. And, and most students do just fine with that, but some students struggle with that. And then some students struggle with freedom, you know, for the first time. And it's, it's uncommon, but some students struggle with uh, drug or alcohol abuse, which leads to other problems. Um, there are other addictions. I had a student come to my office at the end of the semester and say, I'm so sorry. I know I got an F and I deserved it. And it's because I never came to class and it's because I was addicted to World of Warcraft. You know, my God, oh, man, come on. But, uh, you know, just a video game addiction going on there. And so, you know, people struggle with different things. I would say that Minds wants to help students who are struggling. We want to help students who struggle academically. Professors are open about meeting with students and we're willing. Uh, there are a lot of different resources for tutoring the students can take advantage of and it's free tutoring. Um, so the academic resources are there. There's a counseling center for mental health issues, talking to counselors. Um, there are clubs for social transitions and other ways to do that. So intramural sports. Mines really wants you to be successful uh, as a first year student here. And so we, we try hard to, to help you be successful. Um, and students will, will end up having different struggles and trials in different ways. And everybody, you know, everybody, nobody can dodge trials throughout all their life. We're all going to struggle with different things at different times. And we want to, Minds wants to help you with those things. So, what is the average starting salary? For math, I think for the BS on the slide I showed you, it was, let me find that again, uh, almost 70,000. Um, that is probably skewed up by the stats majors. Statistics is more marketable than mathematics in general, although the math students do just fine as well. Um, and you can see a master's starting salary, a difference of about $10,000 on there. So um, I would say the data science master's is probably the most lucrative of the master's degree programs in our department, and then statistics and then mathematics, but they're all well-paying jobs and good fields. So. Uh, what is the math department doing as far as COVID this semester? I'm teaching all remotely um, and uh, I'm doing that asynchronously. Other, others are teaching remotely through synchronous Zoom lectures. Uh, everybody kind of has their own different style that we've adopted. And there are um, some people who are teaching face-to-face -face classes as well. I'm teaching our senior capstone class in, in the spring semester starting in January and I will be teaching that face-to-face. So, um, you know, it just kind of kind of depends. I would say about 60, 70% of our classes right now are remote and the others are face-to-face -face classes. Um, do IB and concurrent enrollment credits transfer? Is concurrent enrollment con concurrent with like a community college or another university? Those often transfer. IB is a little bit, different. Um, I was an IB student myself. I have an IB diploma. But the IB math tests are not calculus tests. So we don't give calculus credit for those. Now you can do like an IB higher math with a calculus focus and get some calculus credit for that. But for the most part, our IB credit is going to give you free elective credit instead of, instead of math specific credit. So it's, it's a little bit unusual. We might give you a math elective credit if you did IB higher math and studied combinatorics or abstract algebra or topology in IB. We might give you some credit for that. But it's more of a case-by-case -case thing uh, because IB can be so unique um, and can have so many different tracks. Would you say MINDS is more of a team academic environment or a competitive academic environment? 100% team. Um, I do not notice any cutthroat competitiveness amongst the undergraduates here. If anything, it's a real feeling of camaraderie. I mentioned earlier that MINDS students tend to feel like they have to work harder than other students at other universities. And again, I don't think that's true, but, but they do. And because of that, they work together. So students, like working together. They form study groups, they form homework groups. Uh, this is very common. There are common spaces for students to gather and work together. There are quiet rooms for them to work together. Or they work outside on the lawn together. And uh, I really love that about MINDS. I think it's very true in our department. Um, I'm on the AMS Discord that the students started. 
they were nice enough to invite me onto that and they just chat there during, especially during the coronavirus where they don't necessarily get together in person as much anymore they chat there they're playing among us i'm seeing them play among us and sending out codes in the discord um posting memes and jokes and just giving advice about classes and there's a separate discord channel for each class so if you're in the math biology class you can get on that channel with other students in that class and you can video chat or, or talk about homework assignments it's very collaborative a lot of the classes will have group assignments or group projects uh, so we want it to be collaborative um, yeah I, I think that's I think that aspect of minds is very healthy and good uh, I don't think there's any there's really no reason there's no nothing is graded on a competitive curves there's no reason to try to outcompete your colleagues or your your classmates and so people work together and like each other Does AP Calc BC passing score transfer and account for Calc 2 at Mines? Yes, it does. I think you need a five on the AP on the BC exam to get Calc 2 credit and start in Calc 3. It might be a four. It's on our website, uh, but I think it's a five. But yeah, that'll get you credit for Calc 2 and you would start in Calc 3, which would be awesome. That'd be great. Uh, and there, there could possibly be an honor section of Calc 3 for students who have done that, which is even better. It's more fun. Uh, I skipped a question. Um, is a statistics minor compatible with a science major? Yes. You could take any of the science majors, physics, chemistry, any of the engineering majors, and you could add a stats minor. It's very common, and stats is just a useful thing to know. So yes, yes, for sure. Uh, sorry I skipped that, Megan. Um, it's not the stats majors messing with the data, but rather the Stats majors get paid more. Yes, if I said they were messing with it, yeah, they're not messing with the data. Stats, statistics just gets paid more, right? I'm a mathematician. I don't make as much as the statisticians in this department because statisticians make more. It's just a more uh, lucrative field. So. Um, pretty much all areas of business need statistics. And most areas of research need statistics. So it's, it's a very common and useful thing. Did I miss any other questions? I realized that I missed that one from Megan. Um, anything else that I can answer for you? We're coming up on an hour here, so we're kind of running out of time. Um, please don't hesitate to email me if you have other questions or things that, that come up uh, that you're thinking about. Uh, I wish I could have seen your faces. I wish this had been set up differently. I'd love to see you in person. I'd love to see you here in person next fall. Uh, I think coming to Minds would be a great choice. You have lots of great choices ahead of you. It's an exciting time. Um, it's hard to make decisions when all of the options are good, but this is one of the good options out of many that you have. So congratulations for getting to this point and having, having good options. Um, let me know if I can answer anything for you. Uh, good luck with the rest of your school year. Good luck with everything you have going on. Uh, it's uh, been a pleasure to talk to you today.